So I've spent 35 years of my life trying to disrupt a single specific market, um, a software market for computer-aided design software, or CAD software, as we call it. I've worked in this field since I was literally a teenager, and along the way I've started three different companies in CAD software. My first company, Premise, you've probably never heard of. Uh, my second company, SolidWorks, uh, I started in 1993 with the goal of disrupting the CAD marketplace and providing a new solution to CAD users around the world. And we succeeded in doing it. SolidWorks, I think, truly disrupted the market. And over the 20 years, almost 20 years I was there, SolidWorks rose to uh, have millions of users, create billions of dollars in revenue and billions of dollars in value. And most importantly, I think it have improved the way that millions of products around the world have been designed and manufactured. And that's most the most gratifying part of the disruption. But after 20 years at SolidWorks, I could see that the market was ready for a new generation of disruption. And so I left and I started a new company called Onshape with the goal to once again uh, disrupt the CAD market and do something good for the design teams of the world. This time built on cloud, web, and mobile technology to respond to the needs of modern product design teams. Now, I'm not sure everyone knows too much about CAD software. Some of you do and some of you don't, but you'll, you'll kind of infer along the way what it's about. So I'm here today to talk to you about how to think like a disruptor uh, to fit the theme of the day of disruption. What have I learned in my 35 years in the CAD market about how to think? What kinds of thinking processes do disruptors use? What have I used? And what have the companies, the many other companies I've seen? I've been a board member and advisor at many other companies. And I, like you, I've observed some of the biggest companies in the world that disrupt markets too. And I'm trying to bring all of that to bear to inform me this morning and talking to you about what I see as the ingredients to thinking about uh, thinking like a disruptor. And I'll organize my comments into three aspects of thinking about uh, disruptor disruption. One, needs identification. How do we find problems and needs in the world? Two, ideas and solutions. And three, execution, because it's not enough to have an idea. You ha have to actually go and build it. So let's start with needs. Great disruption solves needs or problems in the world. And the thing I want to tell you about needs is they all come from people. To see needs and problems in the world, you don't look at technology, you look at people. My father told me as a kid, he said, John, no matter what you do in life, you must learn to deal with people and think about people. And he was so right, because even though so many of the disruptions I've been part of and so many of the ones that you might be thinking about are driven by technology, for sure, the problems that we solve are always people problems. So to think like a disruptor, you have to become almost like a, a, a radar or scanning system of emotions and reactions of people, starting with yourself and your own experiences as a consumer of products, as a user of services, but also observing the other people around you. And so my motivation to start SolidWorks was not only about CAD technology or the emerging Windows PC, it was also driven most strongly by looking at CAD users. I would visit users and I'd see them using the old generation of software. And sometimes the users would tell me how happy they were with the software. They didn't say they were having problems, but I could see the problems they had. So consumers, users of things, sometimes don't even know. Sometimes they'll complain, but sometimes they won't complain. They'll just live with the problems they have and talk about them matter-of-factly. A disruptor thinks about those. I thought about those. I would watch them using the system and they, they, they'd show me how easy something was, but it took 21 steps and they had to write down notes on a piece of paper. I'm like, that's not that easy. Or they talk about how affordable it was, but I could see it cost a lot of money. And so I could see in them a need for, for software that was easier to use, that was less expensive. And that was really motivating to me in starting uh, SolidWorks. With Onshape, same thing. I'd visit 20 years later, I was visiting SolidWorks users, and I'd see that as teams had become distributed worldwide, the old-fashioned Windows software, the software I had built 20 years ago, was no longer so easy anymore. There was constant problems with license codes and installs and service packs and upgrades. The expense of the software 
which 20 years ago had seemed like, a, like affordable, was now very expensive to users. And sharing data was really hard. They were trying to send files all over the world now, something we had never imagined when we built SOLIDWORKS. I saw an opportunity to solve these problems, but only if we would start from scratch and use the latest in cloud, web, and mobile technology. And that led me to leave SOLIDWORKS and start all over again with Onshape. You know, it may be, it may be crazy, to try again to disrupt the same market, but indeed, that's what I'm. Uh, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm trying to do. And we think we're in the middle of disrupting it again at Onshape. We've gotten a good start, and um, and it's coming along nicely. So it starts with user. It starts with understanding needs, needs you feel yourself, and needs you observe in other people in the world. Second key way you need to think like a disruptor is when it comes to seeing ideas and solutions. So you, you have a feeling for a problem in the world, now you have to come up with a solution. Okay, sure, we all know to be creative and looking for solutions, but I wanna to talk to you about a few other things. One is to be curious in the world. Be curious about learning about things, and what I wanna tell you is particularly to learn about things that don't seem to matter. Okay, things that don't seem to be important to any particular problem at hand, but just in your gut feel interesting, go ahead and spend time learning about them. Uh, it was key to me in starting SOLIDWORKS that I had spent years um, pr prior to SOLIDWORKS playing with, playing with Windows-based PCs, the new Windows operating system and PCs. And I say playing with because at my business that I was working in, in, in an old CAD company, I would explain to people how interesting these things were and the PC and Windows and they'd say, John, why are you playing around with that? That stuff doesn't matter in our market, you know? Um, and what I learned uh, uh, in my own experience is, of course, it turned out to matter a lot, because today all, almost all professional CAD runs on Windows PCs. But at the time, in 1993, you know, and some of you, are, some of you weren't even born yet, um, you, 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 you really, this is the advantage of being older, by the way. When you're older, you get what we in the CAD business called a perspective view on things. <laughs> and you can see that just as, just as 20, you know, 20 years ago, um, people, uh, everyone was using Unix workstations. And today you're going to look at me like, Unix workstations? You know, what are those? You know? And someday one of you will be up here giving a talk like this and you'll say, Windows PCs. And people will go, Windows PCs? What are those? You know? and, and so anyway, the, the point is, I was playing around with these Windows PCs. A lot of disruptions are a combination of a, a problem plus a technology that didn't matter until it did. Okay, so Windows PCs didn't matter to the CAD market until it did, all right? And we see this in, um, in, uh, in other stories, like, like Uber, which has been mentioned a couple times today. You know, mobile phones and GPS, they didn't matter to the taxi industry until they did. You know, internet search, you know, an internet search engine, that didn't matter to the newspaper business, did it? Uh, until it did. <laughs> so if you worked at a newspaper and you were fooling around with internet search engine, people would say, why are you doing that? Well, it turns out Google, of course, redefined the entire market for ads and has greatly disrupted not just newspapers, but all of ad-based publishing models. Um, you see it over and over again. With Onshape, I had spent years before really thinking about starting Onshape, I had spent years experimenting, playing around with open source software, with web, web browser, HTML and JavaScript, with learning about internet speed. Why was I learning about internet speed? I don't know, it didn't seem relevant to the CAD business, but I was interested in it, okay? So don't be afraid to learn about things that don't matter. And I would encourage all of you to go out and pick something that doesn't seem to matter to anything you're doing, but just interests you. It doesn't have to be technology either. You can spend time, you know, you can go to a craft fair on Saturday morning and see someone making something and, and ask them, what are you doing? What, what, where did that come from? What tools are you using? What's new in your world? Be naturally curious all the time and you may find that you develop ideas for disruption that involve tying something that doesn't matter <laughs> to a problem that you see in your world. Another thing about idea generation that I want to emphasize is don't be afraid of bad ideas. Too often we're, we're trying up front to, to think that 
oh, I came up with an idea, but it must be really bad. You know, I'm looking for the good ideas. We think of bad ideas and good ideas as being opposite ends of some spectrum and mediocrity in the middle. I'm not implying I'm mediocrity. I'm just saying that. You know what I mean? There's kind of this natural thinking that a bad idea and a good idea. I don't see the world that way. I think bad ideas live in the same neighborhood as good ideas, and they both live very far from mediocrity. You know what I mean? So like, like think of it like a giant hoop earring or something. Bad ideas and good ideas, success and failure, are like metastable states that are neighbors from each other. And I think some of the worst ideas I've ever had are very close to some of the best ideas I've ever had. You know? And so, so get comfortable with brainstorming about lots of ideas. And don't worry if they're good or bad. Uh, some of the great entrepreneurs in history have had a lot of bad ideas. Steve Jobs, who, you know, who built the great products at Apple, he had also built the next computer, which many of you have never even heard of. Go look it up. And I, I heard someone tell me that after next, immediately after next, he would go lecture at Stanford or something, and the students would be very uninterested and almost laughing about what he had done and instead of uh, seeing his obvious great potential. Um, another way to put it is I think visions and hallucinations look the same until you try to build them, you know? You know what I mean? Things that you, you're sure are the way the world's going to be and things that turn out to be mirages, they look and feel the same. So get comfortable in that zone of generating lots of ideas. Don't worry about deciding up front which are the good or the bad ones. Um, uh, like I say, I had a first company that I built and we didn't end up, it wasn't a failure, but it wasn't a huge success. We didn't disrupt the world. But the idea looked and felt very similar to the ones for SolidWorks or Onshape. So don't be afraid of, of thinking of, of crazy ideas. Then finally, I want to talk to you about execution. Uh, too, too often, people just stop at th seeing a problem and thinking of an idea, and they don't go and execute. To be a disruptor, to think like a, disrupt a disruptor, you have to shift into execution gear, which is very different than just thinking about it. Okay. Sometimes the the uh, obstacles can appear impossible. In starting SolidWorks, people told me you're building an entire new CAD system. This was, in, excuse me, 1993, and I'm like, yeah, we're going to build an entirely new CAD system. People thought it was crazy. So, so what did I do? I got started building it. You know, I didn't have funding yet. I went a year with no funding, by the way. I just built it in my home with some co-founders. Uh, and we took a step. We started, we said, let's get Windows running. Let's get some of the basics running. Let's get a prototype running, okay? And we, we started moving. We weren't waiting for someone else to do something. We weren't finding excuses why not to do it. To this day, I'm convinced that many other people probably saw the same opportunity for SolidWorks. They probably had the same views I did about the Windows PC being the future of CAD. Um, but they didn't act on it. And, the, and people say, oh, you're, you're, you, know, you had a, a great vision for SolidWorks or something. I, I tell people, I think the vision was obvious. I think if we, me and my co-founders get credit, it's because we decided to do something about it. Same with Onshape this time around. It's a huge job we're undertaking. It takes years. Um, as as uh, I think Whitney said earlier about how you have to, to, to be patient in the early days as you come up that curve you often have to have a lot of perseverance to get through it. We did with SolidWorks, we did with Onshape, and now we're getting the rewards of it in the market as people use the product and, and uh, tell us great stories about how valuable it is to them. Uh, this persistence to execute that I've seen in my career and I see in, in other disruptors, this ability to stick, the stick to itiveness to execute, that is sort of at odds in some ways with the, with the kind of creativity that I just talked about in the idea phase or the, the radar scanning of the needs and problems identification phase. And so to some degree, as a disruptor, you have to be flexible enough to one day be thinking of wild ideas and user needs and then enter into this long struggle of building your product. And it's usually a struggle. That's normal. It's usually a roller coaster ride. That's normal. 
You know, Ben Horowitz, uh, who's Mark Andreessen's partner, um, he, uh, he talks about this in his book, The Struggle. Most entrepreneurs, most disruptors go through the struggle. Know that it's normal. When you've done it before, you can say, it's kind of like being on a thrill ride. The first time, it's wild. The second time, you say, okay, I know, I know I'm going to get a little sick as we go up and down the, the rise and fall. That's normal. The other thing I want to tell you about execution is don't worry about being first. Okay? Too often we worry, oh, I don't want to start working on this because someone else is already doing it. Don't worry about that. Look at the great examples in the world. Like, like look at Facebook. Anyone remember MySpace before it? I mean, people thought MySpace, what's that? Yeah, yeah, was the social network, but Facebook came up. I mentioned Google Search, but was Google Search the first search engine? No, there was Alta Vista, which looked like it owned the market. The iPod, okay, the iPod, those of you who are old enough, do you remember before the iPod existed, there was the Rio, the Rio MP3 player. It was very popular. I mean, I know you younger people don't know this. But so, so don't worry, you don't have to be the first, but you do have to be, okay? You do have to take a step and execute. And I always say, if you, I can't, if you try, I can't guarantee that you'll win and be a disruptor, but I can guarantee that if you don't try, you won't win, okay? I, I can guarantee if you don't try to build your disruptive idea, you won't build it. You, know, you won't wake up one morning and find, oh, I, someone built it for me when I was asleep. It doesn't work that way. So in closing, I'll tell you that I, I hope I've shared a few lessons, a few thoughts about my 35 years in the CAD market and my years of observing other disruptors about finding needs and problems, about coming up with ideas and solutions, and about then going and executing. And it's my sincere hope that, that many of you try your, to execute on your own disruptions in the world, and that many of you will probably experience, like I did, perhaps one that doesn't work out as well, but hopefully many of you will experience, as I do, one that truly does become a disruptive success in the product of your thinking like a disruptor. Thank you.